Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, listen, I think we all agree this is a big problem. It's my definition of a problem. There's no easy solution. Uh, as chairman of this committee, I would meet with Facebook, and I appreciate what they were trying to do to pull down Islamic terror type of uh, content. Uh, so I think we all agree that uh, we, do, we don't want to be disseminating extremist, violent, inducing type of behavior through these platforms, but we also need to protect free speech as well. So it's, 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 it's a real tension. It's a real balancing act. Um, I think uh, Mr. Uh, Mr. Boland, I think you said, uh, talked about the term extremism and harmful content. But I guess that's all in the eye of the, eye of the beholder, isn't it? I mean, it's, 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 it's difficult to define. And I guess what I want to focus on a little bit is, you know, where do we draw the line in terms of taking down content that we all would agree is extreme and, and could induce violence versus censoring legitimate political debate. Uh, I don't know, Mr. Uh, Mr. Roder, do you have any idea what percentage of uh, Twitter employees are conservative versus liberal? I have no idea. You, you, you think it's probably pretty heavily tilted to the left, correct? I, I don't know. Uh, well, I think you do. Uh, Mr. Uh, Bowen, would you want to answer that question? I, I, I just don't know. I mean, okay. Uh, Mr. Kane, it's, it's obvious, but. Uh, uh, I, I, my only uh, knowledge is, is China tech and, and TikTok. I'm not as familiar okay. with that area. So, so let, 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 let me move on. Let, let me use an example that I think we're all aware of. Okay, the, the 800 pound grill in the room. Let's, let's talk about the Hunter Biden laptop. Um, Mr. Roder, do you believe that? like Washington Post, that there's authentic information on that laptop? I'm not sure. I will say that the, these are massive platforms. There are I mean, billions I, I, of pieces I, 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 of I've got very little time. Okay. Mr. I don't know. Mr. Bowen, do you know whether, do you, do, you assume, do you assume that's authentic information on the laptop? I don't have an opinion on the, the laptop. Oh, okay. Um, so Twitter was actually very effective when they blocked the New York Post articles on the Hunter by a laptop. Did, we had uh, Jack Dorsey in front of the Commerce Committee back in, I think, October 2020, and both Senator Cruz and, I, and myself asked him, because uh, we were talking about you know, Russians using the platforms to impact our elections, and everybody agrees that could happen. We asked Mr. Dorsey, do you believe Twitter could impact the election? Uh, Mr. Dorsey said no. Mr. Reuter, do you believe Twitter has a capability of impacting the election? I think all these social platforms, are, they're so massive, it's hard to believe that they're not impacting. Mr. Bowen, do you believe that as well? No, these, these, plaf these platforms absolutely have influence, and I believe Mr. they influence. Mr. Kane? Absolutely. Okay, so there, there is a problem right there, okay? And I appreciate you acknowledging that fact. You know, we had uh, 51 former intelligence officials. I have no... On, I have no idea on what basis they wrote this letter that came out immediately. I, th I think it might be, you know, because the FBI had a scheme in August of 2020 to downplay the derogatory information on the Hunter Biden laptop. But they came out and said that the laptop had all the earmarks of a Russian information operation. Uh, seems to me like that letter itself was an information operation. Um, so we have this platform that censored, the platform censored that, Facebook throttled it back. Uh, we actually took a poll on this. I didn't, but a company called Media Research Center poll. This is after the election, 1,715 voters, 750 voters in seven swing states of Biden voters who were unaware of the emails, text, testimony, banking transactions on the laptop, as well as Senator Grassley's and my report, which was based on interviews with U.S. persons and U.S. documents, okay? And 79% of those Biden voters said they would still vote for him, but 16% said they would not. 4% they'd either switch their vote to President Trump, 4% would vote for third party, 4% 4 would skip voting altogether, 5% would not have voted at all. Pretty strong evidence that what Facebook and Twitter did impacted the 2020 election to a far greater extent than anything Russia ever could have hoped to have done in 2016 or 2020. 
I want to talk about a little bit, a little other disinformation coming out of this committee. The day or two after Senator Grassley and I issued our report, based on U.S. documents, interviews with U.S. persons, our now committee chairman, who was then committee ranking member, issued a press release, said, Peters widened response to a Republican effort to amplify Russian disinformation. He said, I generated a partisan political report that is rooted in Russian disinformation. Mr. Chairman, do you want to retract that false allegation now? Now that we know that the Hunter Biden laptop is accurate, that there has not been one scintilla of information provided in Senator Grassley's and my report that has ever been refuted. It was 100% accurate. And yet you, as ranking member of the committee, accused me repeatedly of soliciting and disseminating Russian disinformation. Do you want to retract your false allegation here that you issued in your press release on September 23rd? Um, no, let's just focus on what we're trying to Well, I'm focusing on this because this is exactly the type of harm we can do to our political process when you have these big tech companies engaging in political debate, censoring one side of the political spectrum and amplifying the false allegations of another side. Do, do you, any one of you want to dispute that? Well, Senator, I think it's, it's important that we get the data to know. This is why the Platform Accountability and Transparency Act is so critical to our, our, our globe and our nation, is that if you were able to look at the data to understand what had happened from content moderation and you were able to see the distribution, you could compare that data across the platforms and see what sort of impact that it had. Um, absent well, that, I would, I, there's you a know, lot of conjecture. I, so let me just, one part of it, transparency, would be to at least have people who at least work, used to work or work for, these platforms to at least acknowledge the highly political nature of the individuals that work in them. Just acknowledge it. I mean, it's, it's obvious to everybody. I mean, Mr. Zuckerberg spent, what, about a half a billion dollars impacting the 2020 election, took over the Green Bay election system in a highly partisan fashion. About 95% of the, the money he spent were in Democrat strongholds in Wisconsin. Can we at least acknowledge that there's enormous political activity going on, partisan activity going on within these social media companies, rather than just try and bury it? Let's be honest. Let's be transparent. But let's yeah. be honest in our transparency. I, I agree with you on the request for transparency. My experience, uh, outside of whether someone had a certain political leaning or not, I didn't see political leanings shape the decisions that were made inside the company, per my experience and what I, what I saw. Okay, well, I, I saw it in their censoring the New York Post article prior to the 2020 election. And I think it's pretty obvious. Thank you, Mr. Chairman.